In this episode, we're going to be talking all about how you can increase your bottom line and make more money in your photography business. Hi, my name is Katherine Gidgery and I'm going to be talking to you today about how to make more money in your business because it's a business and not a hobby and we all need money to sustain a living. Before we dive into the content, if you're interested in learning more about pricing, I have a free pricing guide that you can download in the comments below that will teach you all about how to determine your base price. The first thing we should point out is that it's going to be much easier to sell to an existing client than to go out and find a new client. That's sort of a misconception is that we think we have to keep getting more and more clients and doing more and more work. But a lot of times, if you just work with the clients that you already have, have and look at ways to incentivize and provide offerings to them that you can actually make more money with the people that are already trusting and enjoying the services and products that you're providing for them. Okay, so let's talk about a client whose wedding you've recently photographed or whose wedding is coming up on the horizon. If you do not have albums yet in your offerings, that is a must. So personally, when I'm structuring my offerings, my packages, inside of every service that I provide, whether it's an engagement session, a bridal session, a wedding day, rehearsal dinner, I always provide an opportunity for the client to purchase product. This is multifaceted. I do this for a variety of reasons. Number one, I believe that product is important. We're living in a digital era, and although we all love these things, they sometimes can disappear with our images on them. I'm not sure about you, but I know that there was a point in life where I didn't have my images backed up to iCloud and my phone died, my phone broke, and I lost all of my images. I don't want these things to happen to my clients. Even with iCloud or with some sort of backup system, it's so nice for us to be able to create these monumental, memorable images and to give them a way to enjoy those photos over and over again. So first and foremost, I just believe that product is great for our clients to really get the most out of the images that we're creating for them. I can't tell you how many times I would run into clients a few years after I had photographed their wedding and they would say, oh, Kat, like we really, we still want to print our photos or we still want to make a book, but we've just been so busy and we haven't had time to do that. I believe it's our job as photographers to give them that choice to hire us in order to put together those albums and products for them. What that also does is it gives us the ability to make money. When we photograph for a client and we are creating these images, if we're not offering them al albums and books, we're leaving money on the table. If you're providing a service, Offer them an album or book in the packages on the front end and then bring it up again later on after the service has been provided via email, through your gallery, or even just in person and give them the ability to purchase that album. We hear a lot about passive income and creating more money and profit for ourselves without having to do more work. With the photography business, it is so easy to do that because we're providing a service of which we can create products for after. So outside of albums and books, we should also be offering prints to our clients, canvases, and just professional prints in general. I personally use a program called PickTime. PickTime is a wonderful service. I'll go ahead and put my code here below so that if you're interested, you can sign up with a discount. If you set up your photos in an online gallery, rather than you know sending them a Dropbox link or something that doesn't lead them to a product, you can give yourself the opportunity to sell passively to your clients. What we do in PickTime is we have um, essentially an automation set up. It's a service that PickTime provides to where every time a new client logs into a gallery, whether it's the main client, the mother of the client, a friend of the client, they can log in and the first time that they do, there's a banner that says, hey, Thank you so much for signing up. For the next seven days, you can get 20 to 30% off of your prints. This is so great because it incentivizes the client to purchase prints when they're most excited about the images. You know, if there is a client who doesn't want to print a one-off photo for her aunt, for example, then that aunt can go in and purchase prints for herself without you ever having to do a thing. The only work that I have to do as the host of the gallery and a client of Big Time is that once an order comes through, I just have to approve it. So simple. 
I cannot even imagine why someone wouldn't have their images inside of PicTime or some other gallery system so that you can passively sell products to your clients. It is the absolute best feeling if you are out and about sleeping and you wake up to an email in your inbox that says you had a sale for something that you already completed. So in addition to selling albums, you definitely need to get your galleries up online and give clients the opportunity to buy prints and products from you through their online gallery system. This next point is going to take us back to really the beginning when the client first starts to work with you. If you have just one offering, one a la carte offering for your clients, you are missing the mark. If you want clients to spend more, you have to provide them the opportunity to do so. Think about any time you go shopping. You're not going to walk into a store and there's just one pair of jeans or one shirt or one computer if it's a technology store. You're going to be given options. If a client is coming to you for a photography or a videography service, you want to give them options and incentivize them to spend more with you. You provide more services and products, right? So you need to show the client that that's an option for them to purchase. I've tested out the a la carte system for my business where there was just one base package and that's what they book if they want to work with me. But I realized that when I started giving them options to upgrade, that was something that a lot of clients wanted to do because they wanted to hire me for more services of which I would love to do that. Again, going back to that point earlier on, it's so much easier to sell to someone who's already purchased from you, who already trusts you. I can't tell you the number of times that someone's hired me for their wedding and then after the fact they come back and say, hey Kat, you know what, actually we want to do an engagement session or maybe they do the engagement session and close to the wedding they decide they want to add rehearsal dinner. The more opportunities that you can give people to hire you and incentivize them to work with you on more products or services, then the more money you make on the back end of your business. Okay, so let's go back to the initial call. When they first reach out to you, you've given them the pricing and then they want to schedule a phone call. When you get on the phone, I encourage you to listen. Listen to what the client is saying. Listen to what they're wanting. If they're wanting a book, provide them options and show them the value of the things that you're offering to them. The best thing you can do for a client is really hone in to what they're wanting. Interestingly enough, when it comes to sales, you don't necessarily want to sell them everything unless they want everything. My technique and approach has always been to figure out exactly what that person needs and exactly what they're looking for. Sales is really less about selling and more about just listening and figuring out what it is that they really want, what they're looking for, and giving them that. You're going to find out in your career, if you haven't already, that not everything is for everyone and maybe even we are not for everyone. But the more you listen to them and you figure out what they need as the client, the better suited you become to provide that value for them, you know, offer that product that they're wanting, offer that service that they're needing, and really let them know that you're listening and you're hearing them and you're giving them what they want. You know, I actually went recently into a Louis Vuitton store and I shopped around. I was kind of looking for something, but I wasn't exactly sure what I was looking for. The sales rep that waited on me was so smart. What she did was she observed what I was wearing. She observed the thing that I was touching and she went and grabbed a ring out of the back that she brought to me and said, I think this is for you. And she was right. The ring that she bought me, the ring that she showed me was so on point with my personal style and what I didn't even know that I wanted that I bought the ring instantly. If you are looking to increase your bottom line with a client, whether it's in the process of working with them or even in that initial beginning stages, the best thing you can do is really hone in to who they are and what they're looking for so that you can provide options that are a great fit for them. Let's say the client's working with you, you've provided the service and you're sending them the gallery. Within these services such as pick time, a lot of times we aren't even truly utilizing all the capabilities that these services provide. So with pick time specifically, they have what's called automations and inside of the service, you can activate things like a Black Friday sale, a Mother's Day sale, a Valentine's Day sale. And when you do that, it will automatically send out a series of emails to your clients, incentivizing them to participate in the sale. 
last year alone, just for Black Friday, by the click of a button, we were able to bring in a few extra thousand dollars on sales. It was crazy, but PickTom had already drafted the emails. They target the specific clients. They even include a photo in the email of the gallery in which they are signed up for, and then they present the sale to them. Another way that you're gonna increase the bottom line in your business is by incentivizing spending. This is especially something that we do on the front end of a booking. So when I'm presenting my clients pricing, unless it's through a wedding planner, in which case I already know what they're looking for, I give them a pricing guide. In that pricing guide, I show them a series of packages, which I refer to as offerings, that they can observe and purchase. So if a client comes to me and they're looking for wedding photography, maybe they come in thinking that they just wanna do you know, wedding day and the wedding digital images. But when they see my packages, maybe they're thinking like, maybe I could do an engagement session or maybe we do need a rehearsal dinner. Going back to what I mentioned early on about this idea that if they don't know it exists, then they may not buy it. But if you present it, then they'll think about it. So when I'm showing them the services and products that we provide, I'm letting them know that the more they spend, the more they save. This is a great tactic to honor and reward your clients who are spending more money with your business. My clients who are purchasing my base package, for example, are not necessarily going to receive a discount on the total. However, if they're purchasing my top tier item, then they are going to receive the biggest savings that I offer. I like to do this because it gives them you know, sort of honors them in a way that lets them know I appreciate the fact that they are investing and trusting me with their money for their event. I get asked this question a lot in my pricing mini course in our education shop, but basically I don't list out the discount anywhere. I don't say, you know, this package saves this much, this one saves this much. You can just see it visually. If you want more details specifically about pricing, you want to see my packages, you want to see how I do that, you can go to Cat G Shop and actually purchase my pricing mini course where I dive all into all of these things. But I did want to mention that I am incentivizing spending by honoring with a larger discount clients who spend more with the business. Okay, and the last thing that I want to talk about in terms of increasing your bottom line is becoming better at what you do and better at the images that you're creating. So all of these other tactics are great, but at the core of a good solid business, at the core of making more money, is being better at what you do, working harder, creating more consistent images, becoming better at your craft, and doing a good job in working with your client and creating better relationships with them and with the vendors that you're working with. I think we often focus in on these tactics and strategies on how to make more money. And these things do work. However, if you really want to rise to the top and be known in your industry and make more money in your photography business, then you do a good job. You show up. You do consistent and good, solid work. And I promise you, if you do that, the money will come. I hope this information was helpful for you and your business. If you have any questions about any of the things that we talked about, please comment below. If you found this valuable, don't forget to subscribe so that I can keep providing good, valuable photo content to you. And we have free downloads in the comments below. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful day and um, happy shooting. <laughs>